Hi students, my name is Dr. Surendra Sesi Kumar. I am going to handle your lab session. To do that, today I am going to explain you uh, the adiabatic batch reactor. We are going to demonstrate you how the instrument look like and how to operate. Later on, in some other video, we are going to show you the experimental pressure if the things are going online. Today we are taking the help of uh, our lab assistant Dr. Prashanji who is going to assist us in demonstrating this particular experiment. And thank you very much. Okay students and uh, this is our uh, lab assistant Prashanji and he is going to show you various parts in this adiabatic batch reactor system. The system which is you are seeing is the adiabatic batch reactor. And this particular setup consists of a reactor with motor of capacity 1 liter. This is the 1 liter capacity which is going to put, you can put the contains inside this 1 liter capacity container. And there is a stirrer attached to it. And the flask is double insulated with a ceramic wool insulation. This whitish, I mean uh, the covering around the reactor is called the insulation material to make the reactor in an adiabatic mode. So none of the heat can go outside the system. The whole setup is mounted on a rigid MS frame which is this one. So you can able to move uh, this particular reactor wherever uh, I mean when if you want to change the position of the reactor uh, which is I mean that's a different task anyway. So the you can operate the stirrer using this switch. Okay, this is the mains. If you the moment you on the mains, the power will be transferred to the I mean uh, digital system where you can able to observe the temperature. See, presently the 26.2 is the temperature inside the reactor. So that uh, there is a sensor in the reactor. You have to put it inside the system to sense the temperature. And, uh, and why this sensor? Because you need to measure the temperature during the reaction. I told you this is an exothermic reaction. So as the moment you start the reaction, the temperature is going to rise, which will be sensed by this temperature sensor and recorded in this digitally. Presently, it's a 25.7 degrees centigrade. And the one which is adjacent to it is called stirrer switch. Uh, so you can uh, turn the stirrer on when the moment we are ready uh, for conducting the reaction. And uh, this is how uh, the reactor, I mean the stirrer will move inside uh, the reactants inside this adiabatic reactor. Dear students, to conduct this reaction, we need to have two, one reactant which is hydrogen peroxide. And the, the catalyst that is going to intensify or increase the rate of reaction is potassium iodide. These are the Two, uh, one reactant and one catalyst is required to conduct this particular reaction. And let me tell you the experimental procedure. We have to prepare the 450 ml of uh, hydrogen peroxide solution in the beaker. And you can use, I mean, this particular beaker and uh, fill up the ingredients and you put it and you pour all the hydrogen peroxide solution into the reactor using funnel okay this is just a demonstration I'll, we are not conducting any particular reaction at this moment and after you pouring you have to prepare the catalyst solution the catalyst solution here you have to take a specific amount of catalyst which is specified in the manual and make a solution in a small beaker and once the solution is ready and you use the same funnel uh, to pour the in catalyst so once everything is ready, the moment you drop the catalyst inside the reactor, you have to close the lid to make sure that none of the heat ex I mean, escapes and start the stirrer. And the moment you start the stirrer, because the reaction is going to happen inside the adiabatic system, because none of the heat is coming, uh, you know, can able to get out, so what thing it does is it will increase the temperature of the reaction mixture which you are going to sense in this particular temperature, distal temperature indicator. 
So, with respect to the time, as the reaction proceeds, the temperature is going to rise inside the reactor, which is going to show in this indicator. So, every 30 seconds or 1 minute or so, you have to note this particular temperature. Dear students, it is important to know the closing procedure of any experiment. And right now, Prashanji is going to deliver us how to close after the end of the experiment what you are supposed to do. Prashanji, please continue. Uh, you open the lid at the first stage and separate the thermocouple and uh, put it inside the beaker so that it won't get dropped anywhere. And uh, your next thing is try to open this knob. And uh, the next procedure is to detach this stirrer. Okay, once you stirrer is detached, remove the entire the reactor with insulator. Drain in the sink and wash it and just after washing you keep it back to the place where you people have been removed so this is the closing procedure <laughs>